Who will score the most goals, Harry Kane, Sergio Aguero or Mohamed Salah? With the title race pretty much decided, the only remaining question is which player will score the most goals? All three have had unstoppable seasons. So the question is which factors will determine the eventual Golden Boot winner? Their team, the player or their motivation? I'm Anton Allen, let's quickly look at their team first. Manchester City, well, Aguero is in the best team. Manchester City have basically won the league and he has Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Raheem Stern and a plethora of interchangeable world-class players that can assist him getting goals. However, Tottenham aren't a bad side either. Kane has Eriksen, Ali and Son to feed him assists and make sure he's the focal point of their attack always having at least two to three chances a game to score. And finally, Liverpool, well, they're in a similar boat, but as a team, Salah isn't their target man, yet he's still scoring goals. But this isn't so much about one creative player getting Salah the ball, it's his manager, Klopp, that enables Salah to keep scoring goals. Klopp's teams are set up to attack, attack, attack. This means Salah is free to focus on scoring goals rather than defending opposing players. Question, who has the best team to enable them to keep scoring goals? Well, out of the three, Salah certainly lacks a midfield creative maestro that Guerrero and Kane get to play with, even though he's formed a good understanding with Firmino and Mane, but both of them are hungry to prop up their own goal scoring tally as well. So, the fact that City have the most expensive squad in the world means that Guerrero's teammates can assist him the most. So let's look at the individual players to see how they compare. First up, Harry Kane. Harry Kane is a finisher. He's the mold of a true centre forward. He's big, he's strong, he can hold the ball up, he can beat the last man and he's very good in the air. Kane is the most versatile striker out of the three. Maybe he's the most versatile striker in the world. He scored nine goals with his left, nine goals with his right and five headers as well as three goals from outside of the box. However, more than the other two, he definitely needs some good service. However, Kane doesn't even need the best of passes because Kane has the ability to turn a poor cross into a goal scoring opportunity. How? Well, because his work rate is second to none, he's got excellent positioning, he's good with both feet and he's powerful at heading the ball. What does he lack? Well, he isn't lightning quick, but he isn't slow either. Kane is what I call an effective runner. Someone who uses his pace at the right time with control of the ball or to brush off a defender. He can't weave his way through defences like the other two, but Kane beats the last defender with an effective dribble, getting him the perfect place to score a goal. But the difference between Kane and his two opponents for the golden boot is that they can beat maybe two to three players with their dribble and create goals from nothing. But Kane is still the most versatile. Next up, we've got Liverpool's amazing Egyptian winger turned wing forward Mo Salah. Currently, Salah has scored two goals with his right, 19 with his left, one header and three from outside the box. That's truly remarkable considering he's playing in the new team and he's not an out-and-out -out striker. The only comparison to make is with Raheem Sterling, who is in a similar position, having a great season in a better team, but still hasn't got Salah's goal-scoring record. The difference between Salah and Kane is Kane only needs one or two chances to score, whereas Salah can make himself those one or two chances. He he can receive the ball in a non-goal threatening position, but with his skill he can work his way past two to three defenders, creating an opening out of nothing. Currently Salah and Kane have played the same amount of goals, but Salah has played less minutes so he's a better minute to goal ratio. Salah has also become the fastest Liverpool player ever to reach 20 goals in a season. Finally, Sergio Aguero. His four goals against Leicester made up for him featuring in four less games than Kane and Salah. Sergio has scored 15 goals with right foot, one with his left and five headers. Kane and Guerrero are certainly different statures, so it's surprising to think they have the same amount of headed goals. But the key difference is probably not the player, but the quality of pass they're receiving. Aguero has Kevin De Bruyne giving him pinpoint assists, making it far easier for him to score goals. But as a player, he's certainly not wasteful. He's a true finisher, a poacher, a creative striker. He can dribble at and around defenders, as well as shoot from distance. Despite this, he's never actually made it into the PFA team of the season. Maybe it's his understated nature that's meant his abilities have gone unappreciated. But now Man City's all-time leading goal scorer, so maybe he'll get Get some praise that he surely deserves. I'm going to give the individual player winner to Harry Kane. Finally, motivation. All three of them will have the desire to score, but the key difference will be the fact that Spurs and Liverpool will have added incentive of fighting for Champions League places, whereas City are basically chasing a points tally and Aguero can chase the golden boot. City's motivation may die down close to the end of the season, whereas Kane and Salah will need to stay in rich scoring form to keep their respective teams in Champions League hopes alive. 
The difference might be that they edge in front because of that. Or maybe Aguero will be allowed to focus just on scoring goals and his teammates will come together to enable him to score as many goals as possible. Most motivation? Well, I'll give it to Mo Salah, simply because he'll be trying to be one of the first midfielders and players in a new team to win the Golden Boot. Before I give you my answer, please don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you download the OneFootball app for all the latest football stories. So the overall answer, well, for one player at least, the biggest factor will be their playing position. Mo Salah is a wing forward or a second new striker depending on the formation, whereas Aguero and Kane are centre forwards. This means that their team's goal is to get in the ball so they can score, whereas at Liverpool, Mo has to share the goal scoring opportunities with Mane and Firmino, and more so than Kane and Aguero, he actually makes his own goals. He takes on multiple defenders and scores from sometimes impossible angles. So the question is, how long can he carry on doing this? Quick answer, not forever. So the real debate is between Kane and Aguero. Aguero is in a better team, but Kane is in a hungrier team. Hungry versus quality, I pick quality. Aguero will get more opportunity to score, whereas Kane will have the desire to score, the hustle to make sure he scores, and the need to get three points. But City's embarrassment of riches in terms of quality players mean that Aguero gets more chances and has far more space to operate. Whereas teams need only stop Kane getting the service by pressing or stopping the crosses getting to him to stop his goal scoring run. Whereas Manchester City have the best midfielder in the Premiership and multiple other players that can make sure their star man has the ball at the right place at the right time to make sure he scores not just one goal but multiple goals, especially against those lesser teams. So I think Aguero will win the Golden Boot and Harry Kane will come second and Mo Salah will come third. But let me know your predictions. FYI, Arsenal legend Thierry Henry actually thinks that Harry Kane will win, but he actually wants Mo Salah to win because he's in such a harder position. Am I right or is Henri right? Please comment your thoughts. Thanks for watching. I'm Anton Allen and I'll see you soon. Peace.